OK, thanks everybody for joining us. We'll get started now. It's a couple minutes after there might be a couple of stragglers coming in, but I'll add them to the room as as they show up. My name is Scott Cranstuber with Sense of Technologies. Um, today, Chad King, our product manager, and I are going to do a little virtual tailgate training. Uh, the topic today is going to be purging gas lines with Sensit Gold G2. Um, as most of you know, there are special two special features within the menu on G2 that make purging gas lines into or out of service um, easier, faster, safer for the uh, utility workers that need to do those do those jobs. So you should all be able to see the uh, first slide there. I'm going to go through a little bit of background um, that'll describe why why some of the rules went into effect regarding purging from the federal government, the different codes and those kind of things and what, what caused that. And then Chad will go through in the second half of the meeting um, specifically how things work with the Gold G2 to uh, in the purge mode and the inert mode. So with that, um, let's go to slide two, hopefully. <clears throat> So on the screen uh, right now, that one of the incidents that really was the straw that broke the camel's back regarding um, purging was an accident back in June of 2009 at ConAgra in North Carolina. Four workers were injured, uh, four workers were killed, and dozens were injured at the ConAgra Foods facility in North Carolina. And like I said, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. So I've got a short video that I want to show. Um, that should give you a little bit of background. Uh, stand by one second. Okay, you should all be able to see the YouTube screen up with this video. The accident at ConAgra Foods Slim Jim production plant occurred during the installation and commissioning of a new gas-fired industrial water heater manufactured by Energy Systems Analysts, or ESA. Several days prior to the accident, a new steel gas pipe was connected to a natural gas supply pipe located on the roof of the plant. The newly installed gas pipe ran over 120 feet along the roof and then down into a utility room where the new water heater was located. The new gas piping was pressure tested with air to check for leaks along with the existing supply pipe. No leaks were found. ConAgra employees then used natural gas to purge or remove air from the supply pipe prior to use. Attaching a temporary hose to the supply pipe, ConAgra workers vented the flammable gas directly outdoors. However, they did not purge the air from the new steel pipe leading to the water heater. On the day of the accident, an ESA worker was attempting to remove air from this new piping prior to lighting the heater. But ConAgra did not always require piping to be purged outdoors. The gas supply valve on the roof was opened. Then the ESA worker opened a valve near the water heater, allowing gases to escape through an opening in the pipe. However, he was unable to light the heater and evidently concluded that this was caused by air remaining in the pipe. So he continued venting the pipe intermittently into the utility room over two and one half hours. But the air had left the pipe and invisible natural gas began entering the room. No one used combustible gas detectors to monitor the atmosphere. Instead, workers used an unreliable practice. They trusted their sense of smell to warn them of the presence of natural gas. 
they were unaware that the gas had built up to a dangerous level inside the building. Shortly before 11.30 a.m., the natural gas found one of several potential ignition sources, perhaps an electrical device. Why is it so hard Stand for hard people to find a pair of reliable and durable sheets <laughs> with that thing that is thrown and ignited, causing a catastrophic explosion? The building construction included prefabricated concrete roofing slabs known as double T's, weighing about 12 tons each. Many of these double T's came crashing down to the floor more than 20 feet below, injuring and trapping workers. More than half of the roof either collapsed or was severely damaged. Four people were killed, including the ESA employee, who died due to burn injuries over five months later. A total of 67 people were sent to the hospital, including three for life-threatening burns. Among those killed was Deborah Petaway's 33-year-old son, Lewis Watson, who worked with his mother at the plant. Ms. Petaway. Wow. So that'll give you a little bit of background on that part of it. Uh, should be back on my regular slides now. Um, there were several other incidents that occurred prior to that one. Um, a fitness center in, again in North Carolina in 1997 burned a couple of people. Um, two plumbers were burned at a explosion in California in 2005. And when Wyoming had an incident in 2007, and then a 30 story, a 30 story hotel that was under construction in San Diego, all had similar kind of incidents that led to a lot of property damage and, uh, and quite a few injuries. So all due to some kind of failure in the purging process. So we're, today we're gonna talk about two different kinds of purging. There is um, purging into service, which happens when you have a new section of pipe that contains air and you have to prepare it for the introduction of gas. So the system can be flushed with an inert gas, typically nitrogen, to reduce the concentration of, of oxygen. So when gas is admitted, it can't form a flammable mixture. So that's purging into service. And then purging out of surface, <laughs> purging out of service happens when a piping section already contains gas. For example, they want to do repairs on a section of main or something like that. So they'll purge that section out of service by introducing air or inert gas to the uh, gas that's already in the pipes so that you don't get a flammable mixture. In either case, purging is a dangerous, can be a dangerous um, operation due to the possible accumu accumulation of gas that'll get into the explosive range. So as a result of those accidents that happened that I described earlier, the different governing bodies develop codes and standards to cover purging. The National Fuel Gas Code is the overriding governing standard standard um, AGA developed a guidebook that's on the right side of your screen there that that goes into great detail detail about purging and if you're dealing with uh, propane systems NFPA 58 addressed it so there are a number of different standards that put laws in place to to cover how it has to be done um, this slide describes what's in DOT part 192. Section A covers um, piping being purged of air. So that's one you're putting into service and section B is when a pipeline is being purged of gas. So that's one you're taking out of service. So that's the two different sections that are in DOT part 192. Um, this is a look at the National Fuel Gas Code and what's written in there. There are four key points that we really care about 
as it as it relates to um, gas detection. So the four key points during discharge, the point of discharge has to be continuously attended and monitored with a combustible gas indicator. Uh, the second key point is the gas, the, the CGIs have to be listed and calibrated. So it's not just any gas detector. There are specific models listed and they have to be calibrated instruments. The CGIs have to display a volume scale from one to 100% gas in at least 1% increments. And then finally, uh, the code states that purging oper operations introducing natural gas shall be stopped when 90% gas volume is detected in the pipe. So those are the four key points in the code. And um, we have more information on that. If you need more details for anybody, you can let us know. From here, Chad's gonna take over and talk about how this specific, specifically impacts the G2 in each case, whether it's into service or out of service. And uh, Chad, I think I heard you come on, so you can go ahead and take over. All right, thanks, Scott. Yeah, so um, keep in mind, um, you know, the, the the purge mode does exist in the G2, um, along with the inert mode. Um, also, the track at 3A uh, contains the purge mode. We're working on an inert mode uh, feature for that. So I just wanted to point that out. The UIs or the user interfaces are the same. Uh, and then, and the, you know, the thought process behind uh, purge mode and inert modes, uh, they're, they're ideal between the two products. So, um, you know, purging out of service, as Scott uh, kind of already talked about, or purging the gas or main uh, to do repairs. Um, typically, you know, that can Typically, most utilities do that either with an inert gas such as nitrogen, or they will use uh, compressed air. Um, more of them probably use nitrogen than air, but there's still some uh, companies out there that do use compressed air for purging of service. Um, you know, when we're purging uh, with an inert gas, uh, O2, O2 sensors uh, and dilution tube are required um, with that nitrogen or inert gas purge. Um, compressed air, um, you know, the goal is to just basically eliminate the chance uh, of explosion. So when you think about the fire, is now exiting. So when you think about the uh, the combustion triangle, you need heat, fuel, and a source. Um, so, or sorry, heat, fuel, and oxygen. So if we remove the oxygen uh, in the in the uh, in the, in the fuel part, um, we're taking two, two sides of that uh, triangle out of there. Um, you know, as far as the G2, uh, typically most uh, most procedures call for a 10 LEL or less reading uh, on, a, on a CGI in order to shut it in and de declare it purged. Uh, some companies might say get it as low as you possibly can. Um, you know, what the definition is is regarding time and how long you watch it. Uh, it's going to vary from company to company. Um, purging into service, um, you know, we want to we want to remove all the air or and or nitrogen uh, out of the line and fill it with fuel. So uh, that's our goal: purging into service. Um, O2 sensors optional uh, for the purge mode. Um, it, it's it's another uh, piece of information uh, that can be helpful uh, during a purge. Um, you know, as far as the uh, readings on the instrument, um, you know, the goal is to get them uh, to 100% um, by volume or to purge the line until we're, we've rid it completely of air or and or nitrogen um, or that inert gas uh, that they used uh, for purging it out of service. So, um, you know, the, the, the National Fuel Gas Code uh, calls for 90%. Um, so once it hits 90%, you are supposed to declare it purged and cease purging. Uh, a lot of utilities um, operating procedures um, don't necessarily follow that code. Uh, a lot of them will have um, you know 95%, 98%, or as close to 100% as you can achieve. Some of them actually state you got to see 100% reading on the instrument. So it's just going to vary uh, across the industry uh, and geographics. 
Um, as far as uh, purging, uh, Howard there are Howard some. Is there are some. Joining. There are some uh, prefab uh, purge uh, apparatuses uh, that can be uh, found on the commercial market. Um, you know, it's basically a valve and a, and a riser. Um, you know, there is a. I think the requirement's ten feet above your head to purge. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but. Um, I think that's what the recommendation is as far as purging, um, purging safely. Uh, so there's no chance of burns or asphyxiation as well. Uh, for purging into service, um, so we, we have a purge mode or a purge test. Um, this, this, this screen is only to purge a line into service. So we're filling it with fuel. Um, what we do during a, a purge, uh, when you enter into purge mode, we actually disable the LEL sensor. Um, there's no reason uh, to overexpose um, an LEL sensor to a high level of gas. You know, we're interested in 95%, 100%, 90% by volume methane. We're not interested in 10 LEL, 2 LEL, 5 LEL. So we disable that sensor to extend the longevity of the sensor during the purge mode or purge test. As you can see there on the screen, um, you know, to enter the purge mode, you press the B once. Uh, this this, this feature is found in uh, what we refer to as the quick menu. Uh, you just press the C and scroll until it says select test, uh, purge on the bottom, press the B to select. And then we wanna attach a purge probe. Uh, that could be our shepherd's hook or a flange purge probe. Um, you always want to, you know, with, we can't stress this enough, whether it's a bar hole probe, a hot air probe, a purge probe, we always want to test for flow block with the accessory attached. Um, you know, if it's, if the, if the cap on the instrument, if the O-rings are shot, the cap's cracked, it's pulling air from anywhere but the end of that probe, uh, where you want to pull that sample from, your sample is going to be diluted, uh, racking, readings will be uh, very inaccurate at that point. Uh, to exit the purge mode, you just press the A. Uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see a please wait pop up. Um, so once we exit that purge mode, um, you know, we were using TC in purge mode to detect the high levels of gas, so the thermal conductive sensor. So once we exit, uh, we turn on the LEL sensor uh, on the end of the gooseneck, also your tick sensor. We turn that back on and we wait for it to warm back up. Once it warms back up, it'll automatically exit and advance back to the work display. And you can, um, you know, proceed in using the instrument for uh, leak investigation, investigation purposes. Um, here's a, just a quick diagram. Uh, so the, uh, the top left picture, um, that's the G2 perch probe. Uh, that's what we refer to as a, the shepherd's hook. Um, it's bent in a U. The idea there is you just kind of reach up, you place it in a, a two inch, a three inch, whatever size the riser is uh, above your head. You have a five foot hose um, that runs from the purge probe to the instrument so you can get away from the purge. Um, and you're, you know, you're, you're entered into the purge mode. Uh, you can see the purge test uh, that's uh, being shown there in the upper right picture. We got 100% by volume and 0.9% uh, O2. Um, you know, at that point, we can shut it in and say that we've purged it uh, to the standards. Um, as far as the LL sensor warm-up that I kind of discussed in the last slide, you can see it there with the warm-up, please wait. Uh, that's upon exiting uh, the purge mode. We turn that sensor back on. Uh, that way there we can go and um, do other investigative work with the instrument. Uh, purging out of service using an inert gas. So... The purge mode feature um, is only, again, for purging lines into service. Um, that's kind of outlined in our manual. Um, we, obviously, we encourage um, everyone, uh, reps, distribution, customers, everybody to, uh, you know, if you got some free time, um, it's good reading material. Uh, purging out of service using an inert gas. Um, to enter this mode, again, it's in the quick menu, so we're just going to press the B button once. We're going to scroll with the C until it says select test IM. Uh, that stands for inert mode. When you press the B to select, uh, the display will prompt you to insert the dilution tube. Uh, once you insert the dilution tube, you'll press the B button to acknowledge. 
um, to exit this test, you would just press the A button. Um, next slide, we'll, we'll show you uh, what that inert dilute, dilution tube looks like. Um, so why do we use a dilution tube, uh, you know, when we're purging out of service? So the LEL sensor, the, the, the technology that's used on a G2, it actually becomes overreactive uh, when oxygen levels are starved. So when you get down to like 5%, 4% oxygen uh, in a sample, um, you know, the, the, the sensor will actually display a much higher reading than what's actually there. Um, so if you were trying to purge a line out of service, say down to 10 LEL or lower, you would never get there because you're starving it for oxygen. So the dilution tube uh, helps compensate and uh, it allows for the accuracy. Um, again, nitrogen is typically the in inert gas, as you can see there with the uh, red arrow. Um, what this is, is a, it's a needle valve. Uh, so this will be placed directly on the instrument and then your purge probe will be connected to the Y opposite of the needle valve. And you would sample uh, whatever's coming out of the, uh, the riser uh, or the purge point. You would sample that for a, you know, a minute or so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to adjust that needle valve to reach eight to 9% oxygen. Once you get that needle valve set, um, then you're just waiting to whatever your purge, what, what your purge out uh, standard requires whether it's 10 LEL or as close to zero or something other than that, like I said, it's going to vary. Um, so the first pr procedure using the NERP mode is insert it into the gas stream, draw a gas sample for at least one minute. Uh, we kind of talked about that, adjusting the needle valve, um, you know, counterclockwise um, will open, uh, clockwise will restrict uh, the oxygen. I'm sure that the in intake of the dilution tube is pulling air from a gas-free environment. Um, that's critical. Uh, you should have no problem achieving that with a five-foot hose uh, attached to either the shepherd's hook or the flange purge probe. Um, as the inert gas uh, dries down the CH4 readings, you're going to adjust it uh, like we kind of already spoke about, 8 to 9 percent O2. Typical procedures target less than 10 LEL to shut it in and declare it purge. Uh, to exit the inert mode, uh, you just simply press and hold the A button for a couple clicks. Uh, it'll pop up to remove the dilution tube uh, on the screen. Uh, if you acknowledge that, you press the B button, you remove the dilution tube, uh, and it'll exit back to its work display. Um, something to keep in mind, so, you know, we covered uh, purging into service, we've covered purging out of service with inert gas. Now, what if a company is just using air? So if they're just using air to purge out of service, you don't use the inert mode, you don't use the purge mode, you just use the regular work display with the purge probe attached uh, and purge it out of service. Um, pictured here on this slide is the uh, shepherd's hook, brass purge probe, the inert dilution tube, and the flange purge probe. Um, the flange purge probe has a, a bolt that actually slides up and down on it. Uh, so that way there can fit all the various uh, types of flanges. Uh, that are on piping, you know, typically transmission uh, groups uh, use the uh, the flange purge probe, but, you know, it can even be a distribution uh, type probe itself. One thing to keep in mind with the, uh, with the, with the purge probes, um, just like a bar hole probe, uh, we trap all the dirt and debris coming out of that pipe. We trap it on the bottom side of the sensor cap filter. So if you take the sensor cap off of a purge probe and you put it on your instrument, the dirt is now trapped on the wrong side of the cap, uh, the debris. It's going to pull it directly into the G2. So always keep your probe caps with your probes. Always keep your instrument caps with your instrument. Um, a lot a lot of times what comes up, um, you know, what's the max pressure that we can purge at? Um, you know, I've had, I've had people purge at 100 pounds before without an issue. Um, so the idea here is if you have a three-inch riser, and you have this 3H shepherd's hook hanging into it, um, they don't stuff rags around the probe. Allow whatever needs to, you know, the fuel, the combination of the fuel, the inert gas, the air, whatever, allow it to blow by the probe. We don't want to stuff rags in there um, and try to restrict uh, that flow from exiting that, that, that purge point. Um, track at 3A, uh, it's coming soon. 
uh, as far as inert mode. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. It uses a little bit different uh, sensor technology. Um, so the inert mode will be coming soon uh, for the track at 3A. The purge mode already exists, uh, and, we, and we, we, we highly recommend that when they're purging lines into service, whether it's a G2 or a track at 3A, um, use the purge mode. It's going to extend the longevity of the LEL sensor, whether it's the MOS and a 20, uh, 2611, uh, and a G2 or a catalytic type sensor that you find in your track at 3A. So any questions, comments? You know, we, we wanted to keep this one to a single topic. So it's, you know, this has been a pretty quick presentation, but it gives you a good overview of both types of purging. Um, if you have any questions on it, you can let us know now. You can chime in. Uh, you're welcome to email any of us, Chad or your regional manager or myself, and we can answer questions that way as well. I will send this presentation out to all of you that participated for your reference. Um, and if there's nothing else, we'll wrap it up for Thursday, May 7th. So thanks for participating, folks. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. By Very the way, good. if you guys have any other topics you want to hear about, shoot me an email. Send me an email if there's something else you want covered. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. Multiple people are now exiting.